We may take the moon for granted, but what a sight it is to behold in our sky. It's big enough and close enough to us that we can easily make out surface details with the naked eye, like the dark mare and bright craters. Just looking at it through a telescope is impressive enough. However, what I'm about to show you in this video will make the telescope view pale in comparison. You see, we are fortunate enough to have not only visited the moon, but also have an orbiter around it right now with a powerful camera that has been scanning the surface since 2009. So what has it seen? I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum. Stick with me in this video and I will show you some of the LRO's most recent impressive and puzzling images of the moon. Let's start off with an innocuous little unnamed crater. As you can see, there are plenty of tiny craters within it. And this crater is within another crater again. Maybe you can see where I'm going with this. Zooming out, not only are these craters in another crater, but apparently they are contained within two very nicely aligned craters. Or is that really what this is? Well, we aren't sure. Both of these craters are named as one, the Bell E crater. This peculiar type of crater is known as a donut or concentric crater. It is possible that they are the result of two impactors aligning up nicely, but further investigation suggests otherwise. If they were the result of chance collisions, then there should be a random distribution of concentric craters around the surface of the moon. However, that is not the case. Have a look at this. The population of concentric craters actually clump up around certain areas, especially around the edge of this region of the moon here, called Oceanus Procellarum. Another factor to consider is that most of these craters are of similar ages. Looking for clues in the crater itself also reveals something interesting. This outer crater should be around twice as deep as it currently is when comparing it to other similar sized craters around the moon. Now, while a few concentric craters on the moon will certainly be the result of double impacts, the location, age and depth of most craters means that something else must be at play. One theory is that some of these impacts occurred during a time when the surface of the moon in this region was in a state in between solid and liquid, with a consistency similar to cool lava or honey. As the impact happened, it caused ripples which propagated outwards, but then stopped and never smoothed off until it was fully cooled and frozen in place. Although this is seen as an outside possibility. The most likely theory is that when the moon was more geologically active, craters in the region were pushed up from beneath by magma trying to escape onto the surface. This would explain the shallowness of the crater and why we see concentric craters mainly around specific points on the moon. However, while this is the best theory we have at the moment, we don't know for sure. What do you think it could be? Now, apart from the occasional meteor, you probably think the surface of the moon barely changes at all. And while you are mostly right with that, we have found evidence that material does move on the moon occasionally. See if you can spot what I'm talking about in this image here as I pan across. This is the edge of a large 32 km wide crater known as Kepler Crater. And what you may notice along the crater wall is evidence that landslides have occurred here, with the dark material apparently having fallen down the slope. Let's have a closer look at what's going on by zooming in on the most prominent of the landslides in this crater. The material seems to originate from box canyons towards the top of the crater rim. The material coming down here is clearly very fine, certainly less than a meter across, as no individual rocks can be resolved within the slide. However, the largest rocks that got dislodged seem to have all made it to the bottom of the crater floor. What's interesting is that the main mass of the slide seems to actually be made up of many smaller slide masses. Look at these individual trails here. So it probably didn't all happen at once, but is happening over time. 
The slides were likely triggered by tiny meteors striking the crater wall. These tiny impacts and the subsequent landslides round off the edges of the crater, which is why the oldest types of crater on the moon look so smooth compared to the freshest craters. Here's another puzzle to try and solve. Here we have the remarkable Messier crater. Typically craters are round, but not Messier crater. It is elongated with a slit for a crater floor. What is going on here? The mystery continues if you zoom out a bit. Directly next to Messier crater are two more craters. The one on the left seems much older than the other, as it seems to have been weathered away compared to the fresh impact crater on the right. Did the newer crater just so happen to cover an older one? But let's zoom out again, what other clues can we see? Actually, a big clue are these lines coming away from the crater. These are called rays, and they reveal the direction the debris fell after the impact. On rounded craters, debris can go in all directions, like the ones that originate from Tycho Crater. However here, debris goes in three distinct directions, north and southward from this crater, and only westward from this one. So what would cause that? Well, the answer is an impactor striking the surface at a very low angle, less than 15 degrees. And in this particular case, it seems like the impactor had already broken apart into three parts before it even hit the moon's surface. Yes, all three of these craters likely hit the moon at just about the same time, even the older crater. What actually happened here is that ejector from this second crater likely fell directly on top of the other crater due to the low angle of the impact which means that it has been artificially aged. There are some other really interesting aspects of this image though, like the solidified pond of impact melt found at the bottom of the crater, or this region here which appears to have caved in a bit. The impact melt in the first image also appears to have flowed down towards the left of the image. It really is a fascinating set of craters. Let's have a look at another asymmetrical crater and try to figure out why it has the shape it does. While it could be that this crater is also the result of two impacts, or one impactor breaking up into two just before it collided with the moon, scientists think that this is likely not the case here. Notice the shadows in this image, above and below the crater. It is apparent that this crater is right on the cusp of a peak. Zooming out and looking at the topographical map of the region reveals that this is the case. In fact, this may well have been the tallest peak in the local area until by chance this impactor came along and totally wiped it out. Imagine Everest suddenly being taken out by a meteor. The shape of this crater was probably not only caused by the angle the impactor approached from, but also because it hit this steep slope. It might not look that steep from the oblique angled shot, however, over only about 20 kilometers, there's an 8 kilometer difference in elevation from the peak here to the bottom of this nearby crater. In this next image, there's not too much to see. The only thing visible in this wide expanse is this peak basking in the light of the sun. Why is this significant? Well, this peak is on the rim of Apinus Crater, a crater found near the North Pole of the Moon. Future colonies on the Moon will be located somewhat near the North and South Poles, because tucked away at the bottom of the craters here, where the sun never shines, are large pockets of water ice, essential for any colony to subsist off of. Water can be used for drinking, washing, cooking and farming, Plus, breaking down the H2O into oxygen and hydrogen provides breathable air and rocket fuel. These poles also have the added benefit that there are peaks here that are almost always in the sun, unlike other parts of the moon, where the day and night cycle is 28 days long. 14 Earth days in constant darkness 
is not good for a solar powered power system. A peak like this one, however, poking out in the sun while the surrounding area experiences nighttime, would be an ideal location for solar panels and powering a colony there. It's not a perfect solution, as peaks like this one will eventually also become covered in darkness depending on the time of year, but 89% of the time is definitely better than other regions on the moon where you'd get sunlight for roughly 50% of the time. I'll just leave you with a couple more islands in the darkness, this time from the far side of the moon, found in Bar Bar Crater. These are the central peaks found in the middle of this 80 km wide complex crater. Want to know more about complex craters? Then check out this other video in the LRO series I made here. So there we have it, a look at some of the newest and most interesting images from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. What do you like about the moon? And what would you like to see more of in future episodes? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. All the best and see you next time.